Episode 2 cut content from the baseless UPen of Classroom of the Elite. Let's see what you got to say. Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 2 is here. Once again adapting 150 plus pages. <laughs> and in Once again adapting 150 page plus, you know, pages in an episode, but we're used to that. Just two episodes completing Volume 8. But surprisingly, the amount of cut content in this episode is way less compared to the previous seasons oh? and especially the first episode this season. Still, that's the T-Rex scene that everyone keeps talking about, right? Whenever they were in the bath changing scene, people are like, oh, dick measuring context, T-Rex scene, but that never happened. So does that mean it's just completely cut because T-Rex is specific to this arc? So it's kind of like over. There's no hope of getting it reordered in the future episodes. Episode this season. Still, that doesn't mean the pacing doesn't suck and every important scene managed to make it into the anime. No, there's a possibility? Because they sure as hell did not adapt. How did Koenji manage to figure out Ayano Koji's true abilities? He did because Koenji was actually running while hunting the boar, and Ayano Koji was actually able to catch up to Koenji and drag him, right? Or at least pull on him. And I think that's what was different from the anime and the light novel, I think, based off another video we saw. Nagumo's group coming over and playing cards with Ayano Koji's group and a 1v1 rigged card match to test I Even if there's already subtitles, this subtitle is still more visible for the audience. Ayano Koji. Along with completely skipping Ryuan and Hashimoto's What was this discussion, man? So if you want to know about all these amazing moments and cut content, please continue watching this video. Also, mm -hmm. as usual, comment down below if you Y'all know what to do? About the episode Go to his video! Like it! Understand. Sub to his channel, I'll guys! I'll do my best to answer them. And now, without wasting any more time, let's get started. So the episode starts with Ayano Koji's group training for the relay exam and family. even this scene is mostly the same as the LN, one massive difference is that Ayano Koji actually chases after Koenji. And Chase being a big thing, they were running, the boar was getting hunted, he was running and Ayano Koji caught up. So the physical feat of him catching up to Koenji and then even doing the little tug, which in the anime it looked like Koenji wasn't able to move. I'm not sure, maybe it's my head cannon. I thought that the grip strength was at full play there and then Koenji realized, oh, Dragon Boy, you took him out, didn't you? Instead of arriving where he is and being aware that Kyo is chasing him, Koenji purposefully chooses a difficult terrain to run oh. on and even speeds up in order to see but he's still if caught up. Be able to keep up, which he did. That's crazy. Koenji's the one testing Ayano Koji here, huh? Like, you would never think of that, but Koenji was the one testing Ayano Koji's, like, you know, physical competence. Like, hmm, if I go on this difficult path, can he keep up? Without breaking a sweat. Also, a fun fact. No is sweat, that though, broken. Koenji did not actually fight and kill a boar barehanded in the LN. In fact, there were no boars at all. What? The anime just decided to add that for some reason. That's a dub, then, isn't it? That's an anime-only dub. The hunting of a boar with bare hands and then providing the protein to the rest of the fucking school, I think that's a huge anime-only dub, right? Like, I'm genuinely baffled as to what the thought process behind this change was. Just to, like, Giga Chat Koenji moments, right? That he's a fucking Tarzan. He's fucking swinging across the, tea, uh, across the trees like it's fucking jungle, you know? And then he takes out a boar with bare hands. Like, I think this is all just... Anime only ways to kind of hype up Koenji, which I do appreciate. And even though they did cut out a lot of Koenji moments in the last episode, and even the arc about like specifically about Nagumo and Koenji talking, or even like Ayano Koji racing after Koenji, they did have a lot of focus on Koenji these first two episodes. Usually we we're we're lucky if we get to see Koenji like fucking snicker in the middle of the room during the whole season, but two episodes, there was a lot of Koenji screen time now that I think about it. Moving on. Kyo asks Koenji to at least do the bare minimum for the exam in order for the group to not fail. And Koenji being who he is, he completely ignores Kyo to walk away. Nope. But as he's going away, Ayano Koji grabs his wrist group strength. with so much strength that ah. Koenji finds it hard to move. Re so that was not my headcanon. So when he actually did tug and Koenji seemingly couldn't move, that was pretty much the piano and calligraphy at play. And Koenji's like, mmm, Ayano Koji boy yo. I really wish the anime kept Kyo's monologue for this scene. Seeing this display of strength, Koenji says that he found the identity of the person who managed to take down Dragon Boy, referring mm -hmm. to Ryuen. Ayano Koji, as usual, tries to deny this, but Koenji is completely convinced because Kyo's strength was not the only evidence he- Is that a slip up from Ayano Koji then? 
him, you know, fucking gripping onto him and not letting him move? Is is that is that a mistake from Anokoji? Is because he rarely makes mistakes, but maybe that was intentional to kind of tell Koenji what's up. I don't know, because like if you're thinking about a mastermind who's trying to be discreetful, it's a little bit of a slip up. But in order to get his attention, maybe it's necessary. I'm not sure. He had because throughout the camp. Koenji noticed just how weird Ishizaki and Ryuan act around Ayano Koji. <laughs> the trauma. Along with hints, he gathered the PTSD. From a that was completely cut out, which was What's Nagumo it? coming in to okay. play cards with Ayano Koji's group. What? During the night before, Na Nagumo straight up shows up like how Ryuan does in season one and two. You know how he always just barges in in class 1D and fucking walks up to Suzuni and grabs her and sniffs it? So Nagumo actually entered and tried to play cards with us? They cut that. Why is there so much Nagumo seems cut out, man? What the fuck? Nagumo comes over to play cards with Kyo, And you might be wondering, why did he specifically come to this group? And because, because he has his eyes on surprise. him. Right? He has his eyes on Koji, right? Oh, look at this. Nagumo Miyabi, Class A second year representative. He hasn't been student council president long, but his actions and words have already proven provocative. Asahina Nazuna, this is the girl that we're gonna help apparently take down Nagumo. She has like a sunflower thing there. Is that a sunflower? A second year Class A student involved with Nagumo. Very descriptive. And then we have the vice president, right? Kiriyama Ikuto, a second year Class B student and vice president of the student council. He dropped down to class B after losing the election to Nagumo. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's why he's acting as a double agent even more. I don't know, but bro got <laughs> defeated by Nagumo, which is not something to laugh at, right? I doubt anyone could defeat Nagumo that easily, but he did lose. And now he dropped down to class B and now he's fucking acting as double agent. But okay, let Baseless Yupen cook. He was something important here. Did he specifically come to this group? And that's because, surprise, surprise, the anime cut out Nagumo and Ayano Koji's first ever meeting, oh? which happened in volume 7.5. What the fuck? In volume 7.5, Nagumo actually goes into. This is. Volume 7.5 is still. Since it's snowing, this is the episode that we gave K the cough medicine. So we actually talked to Nagumo and Arisu in that episode? Personally meet with Ayano Koji. What? Because he I mean, focusing on Sakai and like that in the episode, I guess, makes more thematic sense. Because like, and Manamu was there too? Fuck me, dude. Fuck me. Because we don't know why Nagumo is like interested in Ayano Koji. Other well, we can guess why, right? Obviously, because if any smart kids in the school has some level of, you know, you know, sussy, you know, behavior around, like, I don't know, because he's, he's, like, a little bit too, I don't know. He's a puppet master. But they cut that shit out. But Nagumo wasn't really portrayed as a centerpiece, like a villain in season two, right? He briefly got shown at the, you know, the new uh, student council president speech. There was a race scene where he barely was seen. So I guess it doesn't really make sense to just suddenly introduce this man at the end and be like, oh, this is important. They were mostly kind of focusing on Arisu, right, in season two. Right, we even had Arisu's dad talking, so it, it makes sense, but still unfortunate that Nagumo content got cut. He managed to compete with Manapu during the sports festival. Nagumo tries to feel out if Ayano Koji is a threat to him. Kiyo manages to play dumb during that moment. I wonder how he played Nagumo dumb. To leave, but unfortunately for Kiyo, Nagumo still had his doubts. I won't go into full details about the card game, but basically Nagumo came in with a rigged deck to see if Ayano Koji would, would notice, notice that he's cheating. But what you should do is just play dumb and just lose and be like, oh, you're so good at this game, Nagumo Senpai. Kyo, as usual, plays dumb. And even though Koenji was not playing with them, he was quite focused on watching the game. And oh. those are the reasons why Koenji managed to expose Ayano Koji. So the card game on top of the physical feat here is why Koenji was able to deduce that Ayano Koji was the one that took out Ryu and I see. So the card game is actually quite important. Because like in this scene in the anime, it's like, what the fuck? Koenji's like, ha ha ha, I hunted a boar. I'm gonna leave now. Koji fucking grabs him. Hmm, this grip strength. Is it you that took out Ryu and? It's like, how did you jump into that conclusion? Okay. While being so confident in it. Moving on to the Nazuna scene, where Kyo approaches her. Once again... They put a lot of budget. I, they put a lot of production value into this Nazuna scene, right? This Nazuna scene and the ending scene with Manabu and Nagumo as well as K 
okay asking Anakoji as he turns around with the sun setting. That was where all the budget went into. Surprise, surprise. This was once again not his first time meeting her. And he met her in volume 7.5. At this point, I... I guess this isn't that big of an offense, like cutting Nagamo content, but still, so much shit that was covered that should have been in season two that builds up to season three is completely skipped, which kind of makes us feel like, where the fuck are all these characters coming from? How do they already know these things, right? I'm like genuinely convinced I'm gonna have to mention details from it every single episode this season, because I know for a fact that I'm definitely gonna have to mention it once again for episode three. But yeah. Nazuna actually met Ayano Koji when Nagumo first went to see him and interestingly enough, Kiyo actually had an interaction with oh. Nazuna even before- Yo, yo, light novel Nazuna even got the fucking zipper all the way down here. Yo, she's a little deadly, goddamn. I, I, I do like her design a lot. For that moment, and that was in volume 7, where he found Nazuna's dropped keychain Though he did not actually go to meet her at the time and dropped off the keychain at the lost item section. Right, because in the anime, it's like, oopsie, I dropped it. Oh, you found it. Let's have a 1v1 talk. No, there was like a bit more scheming involved as to how they were talking that they cut out. The anime obviously had to change all of that. One interesting fact is that Ayano Koji intentionally acts like a cocky first here who's oh? confident he can take down Nagumo to make Nazuna think that he isn't a threat so she does. He acted cocky to make her think that he isn't a threat. Now that I think about it, that scene, Anakoji was very, like, head on. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take Nagumo. You want to take him out too? Okay. Huh. He's right. Damn. Moments like this, he throws me off. Like the running scene, like versus Manabu in season two. It's like, why did Anakoji run fast to stand out? To throw Ryun off. So sometimes... We intentionally do these things to kind of stand out, which actually still helps us in the overall goal of being discreet. So right now, it's to make Nazna think that we're not a threat by acting cocky. Okay. Doesn't report him to Nagumo. The late night talk from the boys was pretty much the same, aside from being more detailed. Family. And having Ayano Kochi's inner thoughts, which is the case with almost every single moment in this anime. Someone mentioned a very good thing here. In my comment section, Someone mentioned, and sometimes I completely forget about the perspective of Ayano Koji when everyone's talking here, or just different scenes. But you know how they're all talking about their childhood dreams, all their different memories, their hardships, their success, their failures. Ayano Koji doesn't have any of that. So when everybody here was talking and being sentimental about their past, what was Koji thinking? Was he thinking, damn, this is how like normal kids grew up. I don't have any of that. What does he think, I wonder, huh? Is he sad that he missed out on that? Does he think that they're interesting creatures that they had such emotions? Does he even want those things? I'm not really sure. Single moment in this anime. And now moving on to the final major scene which got skipped, which was Hashimoto's meeting with Ryuen. Mm. Manabu and Nagumo were all there too, man. In the LN, Kiyo can actually hear what they were talking about. Hashimoto first starts by asking, if Ryuen really did step down as the class leader and also talks about how he can see how much potential Ayano Koji's class has after being in the same group. Mm -hmm. Ryuen doesn't really answer Hashimoto's questions and keeps Ayano Koji's identity safe. He ain't snitching! Yo, what the fuck? This is a great Ryuen scene! He's fucking protecting his boyfriend <laughs> out of PTSD, maybe. Maybe there's a little bit of domestic violence going on here because we beat his ass. And now he's pretty much subservient, but he protected our identity here. And he wonders what exactly is Hashimoto up to. And here's where we learn that Hashimoto just wants to stay in A class and he's willing to work for anyone who's on the top. I mean, okay, I thought, I don't know, that, that, that's pretty much very normal straightforward motivations right he's just like, yeah i just want to stay in a class like that's it okay betray arisu in a heart wait 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 wait, wait. And he's willing to work for anyone who's on the top willing to betray arisu in a heartbeat he's willing to work for anyone who's on the top the the way that he spoke there is a little bit i i, I think there's mis he's missing a word is this implying that hashimoto is willing to betray arisu and he's willing to work for anyone who's on the top willing to betray arisu in a 
betray Arisu, something to betray Arisu. So Hashimoto is maybe thinking about switching teams to Ayano Koji. Oh, <laughs> damn! I I thought because like if Arisu doesn't have the right hand man like protection like Hashimoto, then what does she have? Because it's again this show. It's mental capacity is not enough to win. You need violence. And she doesn't have violence if she doesn't have bodyguards, right? She has Yamaka. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think she might fucking expel Yamaga, dude. <laughs> if she actually took that serious and kind of like had a grudge. I'm scared for Yamaga, but damn. Hashimoto's willing to jump ship. Join Anakoji's team, bro. Let's fucking go. In a heartbeat. Ryuan wonders just how long can Hashimoto play on all sides. And Hashimoto says that it's his specialty. And also says that... <sighs> Playing on both sides is a specialty. Now, I think playing on all sides can be good, but it's deadly because you think that the benefit of playing both sides is that both sides, you kind of have your hands dipped in both sides, right? So you have the favors from both sides, but if either side figures this out, instead of both sides liking you, both sides will hate you. That is the worst case scenario of this kind of strategy. Now, Hashimoto is a very smooth talker, right? You've seen his riz. He's got that charisma. He's got that leadership. I wonder how much he can be a snake like this for. We'll see. We'll see. He can still see fire in Ryuan's eyes. Then we get the arrival of Nagumo and Manabu. And Nagumo here straight up tells Manabu to forfeit the match or he'll end up regretting it tomorrow. What? He also tells Manabu that he's aware of it. Wait, wait, wait. If we forfeit the match, then would the outcome would have been less? Because at the end, you know, we both lost points. Obviously, class two lost less because, you know, Nagumo's pointer year, the entire year, while well, Manabu's is only class. But if Manabu actually quit, would the outcome been better for Manabu at the end? Would it? It was just a simple duel, right? What was on the line? He would have lost a cluster. So even though objectively we wouldn't have lost the points, maybe he would have lost something more valuable. Okay. Okay. Him cooperating with the first year student, and he also knows that it's Ayano Koji. Hearing what? With the first year. Wait, 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 wait. He also tells Manabu that he's aware of him, cooperating with the first year student, and he also knows that it's Ayano Koji. Nagumo is aware that we're ploying to take him. I thought this is our secret. I, I, I thought this is our little secret that Nagumo didn't know because in the anime, he hasn't said anything about it, but he obviously has his eyes on Ayano Koji, but hold up. So he is aware that there's a bounty on his head. Oh, oh okay. Hearing this. How? How? Who leaked it? Who was there? Only Kiriyama. Who fucking leaked it? Kiriyama leaked it? That's the only other person in that room. Unless there's some fucking, you know, unless they do a retcon to this flashback scene for the Nissan Booty Call in episode one, or in the future, it's like, in the shadows, there was actually another person listening that wasn't shown in episode one. Like, they could do some bullshit like that, but... It was only Kiriyama there, right? Hashimoto is literally unable to process what the hell they're talking about. And he's genuinely shocked because he's always thought of Ayano Koji as a background character. So Hashimoto listens to that and realizes the greatness of Ayano Koji there. Okay, okay. We also get Nagumo asking Ryuan if he wants to bet on him and Manabu's match. Yeah, yeah, he controls the second years, but like which second year present in that meeting would have fucking leaked it? It's Kiriyama only. He's a triple agent? I am so confused. Because <laughs> like, if it's really a second year person, like, it's, we only saw Kiriyama there, right? For 10,000 points, to which Ryuan replies, I'm willing to play along for a million points. Oh, fuck. Nagumo thinks Ryuan is just joking around, but then is Ryuan he? says, if you don't got the guts to pay up that much, Damn. don't bother asking me to make a bet. They cut out so many good Ryuan this scenes. This was one of the coldest lines anyone has dropped in the series who isn't Ayano Koji. And it got fucking cut. Ryuan got no fucking love in this arc. He straight up didn't have anything. He just looked a little sad in the beginning of the arc, right? Off the bus, and then we don't really see him at all. And we see him at the nighttime, no dialogue. Fucking nothing.
What the fuck, man? What's the anime doing? So I'm really sad it did not make it into the anime. After that, Ayano Koji heads back to their room. Shortly after, Hashimoto comes back and Kyo felt like Hashimoto was staring at him. Then we move on to the exam and aside from Ayano Koji, all three exams are fucking skipped. Intentionally holding back on all the exams aside from the meditation where most people wouldn't notice and the fact that Koenji did not So in the meditation he actually tried hard cuz no one would notice. Oh that's interesting. Move around and ran the minimum required test and the fact that Koenji did not go for around and ran the minimum required distance and placed second. <laughs> Bro ran the minimum required distance. <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll break a little bit of a sweat and play second, Again, okay. The exam was pretty much the same and the same with the results section. Still preferred for them to take their time, but it honestly wasn't that bad this episode. And the final thing I want to talk about is Ayano Koji saying that he's going to do whatever it takes to save K. I, I think he will if K is a useful tool. But if she wasn't useful, do you think that he would do this out of love? I don't think so because I don't think he understands what love is and maybe he's interested in finding out what that is. But so far, I think these are just common curiosities and he's just horny. And if she is useful, then yes. But if not, just remember, this is a guy that intentionally let Kay get waterboarded so that she's going to feel a little bit more dependent on him. Like, come on, guys. I assume most anime onlys are going to be thinking that he's only saying this to manipulate Kay. Yeah. But in the light novel, it genuinely feels like he'd do anything to keep her safe because the anime cuts out all the moments of them getting closer. Really? So this is really romantic intent here? This is straight up romantic intent? Interesting. And sometimes basically flirting with each other. And really? Also I've never seen him flirt with K. But if these scenes were actually shown in the anime, I could be inclined to believe that. But so far, based on what I've only seen from the anime, bro is cold. Makes Kyo way more edgier for some fucking reason. That's true. Even in the light novel, in volume one, Anokoji feels very human. He's just super horny. He's just dumb thing teenage kids do. But in the anime, he's just like this cold calculating robot that has like no vulnerabilities. I guess that's the animator's direction on how they wanted to portray anime Anokoji. But I do notice, just off of listening to the audio volume one of Classroom the Elite light novel, he is so much more normal than I expected. For example, this was what he thinks about her. At okay. Think we should head back, I asked? Yeah, I started walking. K soon followed. K was the person I'd grown closest to over the past year. <laughs> Not Susune. Not Sakura. K, K. And she probably felt the same about me. She became indispensable somehow. And before I even realized it, perhaps if I aimed for Class A and ended this drama with the student council, we could eventually be friends, maybe in something more. You know what? Okay, it, this passage pretty much confirmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there is a lot of romantic in, uh, intent here. But again, it, as an anime only for season three, it's kind of unfair to think otherwise because there's literally nothing that suggests that he feels this way. But in the light novel, he's pretty much just like, oh, doki doki, is this love? I want to know what love is. The end of volume 7.5, which was where season two ended. And the anime replaced it with the all according to plan shit. In the light <laughs> novel, it genuinely feels like he cares for her and wants to get close to K. And that is basically the end of volume 8 and this video. Leave a like on the- Y'all know what to do. Baseless Yupin has been giving us very good summaries on the light novel content that's been cut from the anime. If you haven't watched the light novel, please check it out. Please sub to his channel, like his videos. We'll be definitely watching more content from him as the episodes roll out.